O'Shea joins us on RaceNet TV, big team going around at uh, Rose Hill for Rose Hill Guineas Day on Saturday. We might start in the Rose Hill Guineas itself, John, we've got Twisted Emotions and Kingdoms. Yeah, just two nice progressive staying three-year-olds um, that have been set for the races. Um, look, obviously they're coming up against much more qualified and seasoned opponents, but uh, they're nice young staying horses and uh, they need to get uh, their toe in the water with regard to this quality of opposition and give us a feel for where we're at. Okay. Uh, twisted Emotions, we've seen him come back this preparation, he's two from two. Um, he always showed a bit of staying ability, but perhaps, what, 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 I was going to ask, what's turned the corner for him? I know, I think he's just a little uh, weak last preparation too, you know, it's probably just come a bit soon for him, but to be fair to him, um, he raced uh, what turned out to be quite good opposition. And, at the time, I was probably just a little critical of him uh, when he got beat by five and a half star here over 900. And, you know, as, far, as it's well seen, uh, five and a half star went on to win the derby. So, you know, mate, possibly I was just a little hard on him there. And, but he's appreciated the time out and he's appreciated the way Hugh rides him. And, uh, you know, he's a fit racehorse with a nice turn of foot and a good stay up pedigree. I guess he brings a different form line to the race. So if there is an upset, he might be the one to do it. Uh, he may well be. I mean, there's, diff there's obviously, uh, you'd think that the Randwick Guineas holds the best uh, form line in, in the weight phrase, is it? and then you've got the race in Melbourne, so uh, there's, there's different form lines all, all round. I think that ultimately the Derby winner will probably go around in the Rose Hill Guineas, so we need to be running well. Okay. See Siren John, we see her return in the Galaxy. Um, she must be going well. Yeah, look, uh, she's a lot bigger than what she normally is first up. Uh, but, you know, it's only 1,100, and so she needs to be that little bit sharper. She does have a big campaign ahead of her, whereas last preparation she sort of had three targeted events, which, you know, we had a sort of right up to the mark for both of them. Um, you know, we never would have envisaged the scenario that's developed in terms of the weight scale of, uh, of the galaxy, but we're happy to accept it. And I think you've well documented, Nick, uh, things probably never went our way last week in terms of the weights, but probably fair to say they've gone our way this week. And uh, with the congestion, she's a nice chance. She's well, well in at the scale, and uh, albeit she's sort of never really won at 1,100 first up, we've sort of set her for the race, and she should be nice and sharp. Well, goes around, comes around, I guess. Yeah, yeah it does. Uh, John, Lighten the Night, first up, he's got a great fresh record. He's in the Ajax as well. Yeah, he has. And, you know, obviously with the scratching and plus here, it probably doesn't have the, the sting to it that it had, you know, in the early nominations of the race. Uh, he, he's got a good, you know, record uh, first up. He's got a good record at 14, 1500 first up. It's funny, you know, 18 months ago, uh, you know, him and uh, Montom were punching around in the Villiers and, you know, here they are lining up 18 months later and we've still got similar form lines. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, they're probably, there's not much between the two of them. Probably Montom, to be fair, has always had the wood on him. Uh, but my bloke does race very well fresh and he seems to come in with a nice barrier. James should have him midfield, one off, uh, you know, st smoking his pipe. Is he got a Doncaster prospect? Well, he's in the Doncaster and, you know, he's run third in an Epsom, so um, in an unsuitable barrier to probably sort of just you know, better suited a little bit, you know, drawing a bit wider. So, uh, you know, he, uh, he, he'll go to the Doncaster and then probably his best chance of sort of being successful during this campaign will be when he gets to Queensland and gets to uh, the Hollandale Cup and, and possibly the Dooman Cup. Okay. Uh, John, we, we saw RaceNet viewers were fortunate enough to see uh, Diamond Oasis, Piero's three-quarter brother, uh, some barrier trial footage on Monday, which we put up. Uh, and of course, he's in the Pago Pago Stakes on Saturday. Yeah, look, he, he did a good job winning first up, and we sort of were a little optimistic on him first up, but he drew poorly, and we just were heavily relying on a great James ride, which we got. Uh, I think the horses that finished just behind him um, got some ability, so you know, it's a race of some quality. Um, he, as you evidenced by his trial, he, he's trialled very well and he's come on since then. Um, and, you know, from the gate he looks to get a beautiful run. Uh, he's a really nice progressive young colt. He's got the right demeanour for a two-year-old. He's a really stout conveyance in terms of being able to cope with the pressure of, uh, of what's going to happen this weekend. And, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty gun-ho on him. He's a lovely colt. Win this Saturday into the slipper next week? Oh, if he wins, he'll definitely run, yeah. We well, beat Whittington in the barrier trial as well, didn't he? Oh, yeah, but he was given a good hit out, um, and to be fair, but you know, there's no doubting that Whittington's form is very strong. I mean, uh, horse Paul Massara's uh, finished down the track behind me. I day come out and run third in the Todman. So, um, 
you know, they run good time that day at, at Warwick Farm. So, yeah, we're optimistic that we've got a lovely colt and he measures up well. A couple of horses that uh, were vying for slipper places and that not so long ago uh, was Shelford and Faustus and they're in the opening event on Saturday. Yeah, but they've drawn the oil refineries. So, uh, to be <laughs> fair, Ramwick. Yeah. Um, to be fair on uh, Faustus, he, he, he's just taken a long time to get fit. Um, he, but he's going quite well. Um, I've got a sort of inkling that he's probably going to stay. Uh, he is out of a, a daughter of Jezebel, so... Uh, we might, you know, see him over the longer distances as we as these progression uh, heads later through the autumn. Uh, Shelford's at the top of his game. Uh, he's broke through now, albeit we had to ride him upside down. Uh, he's a better horse ridden quiet. He was going to be ridden quiet. He'll definitely be ridden quiet from 15. Uh, <laughs> and look, uh, I'd suggest that, you know, going forward when he gets to the South Pacific Classic, 1,400 metres at Ramwick will suit him much better. Yeah, okay. John, two quick questions. One, can you split the three-year-olds? And two, have we got a best on Saturday? Split my three-year-olds. Yeah. Oh, look, they're both really nice conveyances. Probably Kingdoms is more the, the genuine stayer, yeah. whereas uh, Twisted Emotion has got that explosive turn of foot. Yeah. Uh, mate, they're different conveyances. To, you know, they, you know they, it'll be relevant to how the race is won, where, where their finishing position is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And best for the team at all? Uh, look, I think our best is probably the two-year-old. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. Cheers, mate. Cheers.